Good morning everybody, welcome back to another video. So, I've been wrestling over the last 24 hours as to what to do this morning for this particular session and the forecast was for lots of fog in my local area and the original plan was to travel up to up to the Lake District this morning but with such a great forecast it was hard to resist so I've come back to a location that I've filmed I think three times now possibly four and it's the one where I follow a set route round a wood to try and pick up something um, new each time I do the route and with the forecast like it was with lots of fog and it certainly was the case a little while ago I thought it would be nice to maybe concentrate on some of the broader broader scenes there's one or two trees in the wood that I've mentioned previously that really would lend themselves potentially to a, a, fo a foggy um, foggy conditions um, it's actually gone I'm hoping it'll it'll move in again uh, anytime soon just typically with fog it, it tends to drift in and out and it's pointless chasing it you've just got to take what you can and hope that uh, that it comes in and and drifts across the area where you are I've done that before where you, you go out chasing it and you get to one place and it goes and uh, it's just a whole rat race really trying to do that so um, I just wanted to quickly make the point about um, my end of year video last year some of you seem quite concerned that the small scenes that I, I do so often um, weren't going to be part of my my channel going forward well that's completely not the case it couldn't be any further from the truth the point I was trying to make is that I want to go to a location where much bigger vistas are available to me if the light is suitable for them and uh, and I can do those as well as the smaller scenes and it was just um, opening up the opportunities that I get when I'm when I'm in a location here for example if we get some glorious morning light I can't do a big vista because there just isn't any so um, wherever you look it's just um, open farmland with with houses scattered around and it really doesn't have that beautiful big vista feel about it so I wanted to go to one of the national parks which are fairly close to me um, the, the Peak District, the Yorkshire Dales or the, or the Lake District and be on location for if the light um, does something you know amazing and I was going to start the day this morning up in the Lake District at Keswick and I was going to spend some time around Derwent Water before then going on to looking for some smaller scenes that was the plan but as I said, because it's foggy, or it was foggy here, I decided to come to a local area and my plan for the rest of the day is to move northwards um, later on and, uh, and hopefully get in a nice location for another session tomorrow. So, without further ado, it's time to go and find some images and hope that fog comes back anytime soon. So I'm really questioning my decisions this morning. I've just moved from a lower path down there to try and get some elevation um, to see if there's any more mist or any thicker mist up here and towards the end of the path down there you can see evidence of a little bit of mist but not nowhere near significant enough to, to consider doing woodland photography and, and making the most of those conditions. Um, <laughs> I've just when I was walking along, I thought I thought maybe I should check the webcam at Derwent and Water. There's one there's one um, in the in the Market Square there, and I thought, you know what, that's that's absolutely crazy. If I do that and see it's foggy, I'm just going to be so regretful. So I've kept off the internet, and I'm just going to make the most of of what I've got here. But certainly, unless that fog comes back, it's going to be um, eyes down and seeing what I can pick up um, along this route. But uh, fingers crossed that it. Uh, but something will come like drift in at some point but uh, certainly no signs of it yet and even in the distance I can't see any but you know you take what you get it's a bizarre start to the year of photography that's for sure um, another 10-15 minutes has passed and uh, I'm seeing the same things over and over again and what it all boils down to is we've had such a lot of rain recently that everything on the ground, um, everything on the bankings, even the trees, everything's sodden um, and certainly on the floor everything is just flat and looking quite mushy for want of a better word. 
Now I can continue to walk through the woodland seeing the same things over and over again, or I can do what I'm just about to do, which is take the bag off, down the tripod, relax, and find something in this general vicinity. There will be something, undoubtedly there will be something. It's just getting your eye in and uh, paying attention. When it's like this, you really have got to look at the smaller things and stop looking for larger compositions because once you start um, looking smaller, more opportunities present themselves. So, let's do that. So I suppose the question I tend to ask myself is, what exactly have I got to work with in this location? And for sure, there's lots of leaves, lots of beech leaves decaying, various states of decay. There's, um, there's beech mast, which are the little husks um, that the seeds um, come from. There's oak leaves, there's branches, twigs, fallen branches. Um, decaying wood, there's trees, there's bark, mossy banks, um, stones dotted about, um, some of them have got leaves almost fused to them. So when you start to break it down there is quite a lot of stuff to go at in this just this small little area here and um, it's just looking for those artful compositions, those meaningful compositions and on first glance it just looks a mess. And um, you can be forgiven for thinking that, but uh, there's bound to be something. There absolutely is bound to be something. I think we could be on for an image at last. <laughs> I, it's bizarre, I've been wandering around here now for what seems like an eternity to determine to prove my point that you can find something. And I've been looking at such small, fine detail and, and I've literally just come across an anomaly and right here is a fallen beech twig and there's another one just here and I'll just show you because I don't want to move that one but they've got these I don't know if you can see that hopefully you can see that but these patterns you see that these little like dots almost and they're really especially on that side look and they really stand out. And there's one just here. Let me just see if I can show you. Just there, look. And you see how it contrasts with the other. It's not that apparent, but it contrasts really quite well with the other leaves around it. It's quite bizarre, really. Almost like a leopard effect. And it's got this bit of a curvature to it, which I think I should be able to emphasise by angling the camera, something like that. And maybe the polariser will assist in just removing some of the reflections and really help to make it stand out. So, let's get the camera out and let's get this, uh, this morning off to a nice start. This is looking really quite nice just tweaking the composition, making sure the leaves, especially the top left tip, has got room to breathe in the composition. I'll just uh, take one, so I'm at F11, just take one that I've got in the bag, and then I'll put the polarizer on and have a look at the difference. It's a one second exposure, 100 ISO, and I've got my 45 to 85 mil zoom lens on, not a macro lens at all, just a standard um, mid-range uh, zoom lens. but. Uh, that speckling is really picking out nicely. So I'll get the polarizer on, get, get a little video camera on the back of this and, and we'll have a look at it. Right, not easy getting the, uh, the video camera on top of here, but um, hopefully you can see the composition. Apologize for the reflected light on the LCD. The white sky above is just, is just impossible to get rid of um, because it's directly above the camera. Um, now, you can see the composition running through um, the branch that I'm focusing on and you can see the little leaves picking out from the surroundings. Now I have put the polarizer on and it does help. So if I rotate that round you can uh, see the beech leaves around it adding more contrast and if I turn it round you can see there again lots of reflected light on the leaves. 
turn it to that point there much better and you can see the subject really standing out now from its surroundings. So I'll put that shot on now. I can't help but feel a little underwhelmed by this image given how I felt about it on the day. All the things that drew me to photograph it are present, but it lacks the impact that I had hoped for. On reflection, I am of the opinion that the surrounding leaves are just too dominant to allow the subject to come through. Let me know what you think in the comments below. <laughs> I just put my camera away and... Um, would you believe it? I've lost it. <laughs> the shot that I've just taken, I can't find it anywhere. Oh, that really proves just how much these things can blend in. And that, that oh, there it is. <laughs> oh, good grief. I'm looking all over for it. That bizarre. That really proves the point just how, how hard these things are to spot if, you, if you're moving at pace. Um, or, I mean, you could just get lucky and find one, I suppose. But um, to actually lose it, not six feet from where I'm standing that just goes to show how much you've got to be paying attention so anyway I hope you like that image I'm going to move on now and find a, another little area to work and uh, see if I can find another one right so I'm going to make this quick I've been walking up the path absolute snail's pace it's so slow you won't believe literally putting one foot in front of the other because that's what is clearly what's needed on a day like today and um, I don't know what made me look Look to the left, I can't find the damn thing again. Oh, there it is. So just over here. Look at the texture on that leaf there. Let me just brighten that up. Look at the way the light is catching that leaf. And first of all, I went quite wide with the camera, I've sort of put my phone over the top and I'd look. But what it's really about is about the way this light is catching the edges of this leaf. And I think going into there is a beautiful composition. So I need to get the camera out quickly before I lose that light. So this for me is a shot that's worth investing quite a bit of time in getting it right. And, and I don't just mean by that with composition alone, but various um, options on a theme if you will so I started the process with um, a standard f16 shot um, just a single image I, am, I was slightly concerned that there's a lot of undulation on the main subject a lot of deep parts a lot of raised parts and at this level of magnification depth of field is going to really be a problem and f16 it looked reasonably sharp throughout, but um, I don't want to take the risk, so I've done a focus stack um, as well. And I've actually done three different focus stacks. Um, the first one was where you see the camera now, with the composition set as I, as I really want it to be. Um, I've also moved the camera higher up and done another focus stack with surrounding um, bits of vegetation that I don't really want in the frame and the idea with that is is so I can allow for uh, extreme focus breathing um, as, as the stack um, sandwiches together you invariably lose some of the outer parts of the image as you move through the focusing points so I've allowed for that by pulling out and I'll crop that back down to the to the fine crop uh, when I get it back at the computer um, the last one I did was at the same distance but with a polarizer on just to see if it if it was worth uh, having that option as well i don't like it um, as I, as i stand here now i don't like that version i prefer it without the polarizer i do like the sheen on the leaves but it's often the case that you get it back to the computer that you actually you're not that keen on it when you see it and um, the hot spots can be a little bit distracting if they're not under control. So I've got three different versions of, of the leaf of the subject to take away with me and, uh, and I can go away now feeling quite comfortable that uh, I've got exactly 
what I want or what, I, what drew me to it in the first place when I get back. I'll just pop you on the back of here, we'll have a quick look at the composition and then I'll put the image up. So there we have one of the stills that's been taken and um, I'll just move through and you can see the effect of the one with the polarizer. See I quite like that one there which is quite bright, uh, it really picks out the contours of the, of, the, uh, of the leaf which incidentally is a sycamore leaf. Um, my, my finger there is just to um, indicate the point of a, of a new focus stack and you can see there now that there isn't any um, reflections on that surface there and that's fully polarised and you can just see the, uh, the focus breathing effect as I move through the different focusing points. But um, hard to say on the back of the um, video camera, I actually quite like it without the reflections in hindsight but uh, like I say I've got that choice, look at that one there that's really got a lot of reflection on it. I've got that choice when I get back now and I can, I can pick my favourite. So I shall put that image on now. In the end, I decided to go with a balance between a version with lots of reflected light and one with none. The middle ground seemed to offer the best between too much and not enough modelling on the surface of the main leaf. Overall, I am really happy with how this turned out. Beautiful textures and tones and a lovely balanced composition. Now for those of you who are interested, the final image was a stack of five. So I find myself in a bit of a funny situation because I keep coming across these patches of um, bracken and it's died off completely and it's flat to the ground and it's taken on this unusual black um, colour. I've never actually noticed it goes quite so black as it is now, whether it's um, a fungus, I'm not sure. Um, but it's interesting, it keeps catching my eye and this particular little patch here is bigger than the other places I've been to so far. And ordinarily if I've got to think about something too long, my advice would always be move on, keep going and that's what I've done so far with the other patches. But um, there's a large part of my mind now saying it's time to get the bag off and really invest some of that time like I did earlier, searching around for a composition. I can't believe that there's nothing to be had here. There's two little fronds there, just elevated from the ground, which will make a really good um, composition with some complete separation from the background. The trouble is with, with bracken and fern fronds is that they're quite gappy on the leaflets and um, you, you tend to see all the distractions um, beneath them. And uh, because that's elevated, it will be nice and soft and out of focus. But I don't know, maybe it's time to get the bag off and have a good look round. So I've just come and position my tripod down on a shot that I found. I don't leave it without anything in place because by the time I put my camera and my lens together I'll turn around and I'll just be searching forever. The two fronds that I mentioned a second ago are just here and I looked at that and the reason I decided against it was because there just wasn't enough interest around the frame. You've got the two ribs of the, um, the, the, the leaves, or should I should say the frond, running through the portion of the frame, but that was basically it. It wasn't interesting enough. So I went about looking for areas where there was real concentrations of this dark blackening effect so that I could fill the frame with nothing but that, and I've come across this little frond here that's running through an area of flattened uh, fronds underneath it, and they've all gone black. So it's going to be probably a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. The Pentax camera that I use is a 4 by 3 and I think 
without putting the camera and looking at it, I, I just think that there'll be too much top and bottom, and, and I, I much prefer a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, um, which is what I think will suit this best because it will allow the rib of the fern to run through the composition. So let's get the camera on now and have a look. So there is my composition and I've opened the aperture up so you can really appreciate um, the way that it's been lined up. I still think I'm going to take a little bit off the top and the bottom although the 4 by 3 aspect ratio of this camera isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be when I've, when I've got it lined up. So when I've actually got the picture um, taken I've underexposed, still keeping it at f16 by a good almost two stops just to inject that little bit of mood and atmosphere into the frame and it's still retained that gold rib running through the centre of the shot and then you've got these lovely leaflets radiating out from it. Now anything behind the leaflets which would be apparent in the correct exposure you just see here there's a gold leaf underneath when you stop it right down that just disappears into the inky blackness and it's not quite the distraction it would otherwise be but that's a really lovely shot so I'll put that on now. So that turned out to be really quite nice and I've got three images that I'm really pleased with. I wasn't expecting any of that today. I'm going to call it a day now and I'm going to put the images on in just a second. I'm heading off um, to the Lake District where I'm going to film my next video which will be follow the one that's following this one in a couple of weeks time. Now 2024 I've got two workshops running, um, six in total but two different themes. The first is a landscape based workshop with the option of falling back on the closer stuff should the light not present us with anything spectacular. The second workshop is entirely based on um, close up work, intimate landscapes and that one will be staying in one location the whole of the day. The, the more landscape based one will move around a little bit more but um, the close up workshop will be all focused in one spot so there will be no need to drive around to other locations. Now, if the close-up stuff appeals to you, what I will say is that whilst I make every effort in the videos to make it look as natural as possible when I'm finding these things, nothing compares to actually seeing it for real out in the field. So if, if that's the sort of thing you're interested in, I would definitely urge you to come along and, and give that a go. Workshops are limited to three people, um, so you get all the attention. You're going to need the run for a full day. and. Um, People that have been on them previously have really enjoyed themselves. So simonboothphotography.com and uh, under the header workshops and uh, get yourself booked on that. So I'm going to leave it there and call it a day. So thank you all so much for watching. Um, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, if you've enjoyed the video. Leave some comments below and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.